Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everybody that's uh, here on uh, Facebook and also on uh, YouTube. We we're just looking at, you just listened to the Antioch uh, Missionary Baptist Church Choir uh, as they were doing their thing. Uh, <laughs> so today we are. Uh, if you got if you didn't get the yellow book, the booklet. Let me see what uh, anybody's book. The book one twenty has. Um, again, you can contact us and we can go ahead and make sure we try to get it to you um, as soon as possible so you can go through the literature with us. <laughs> Feel free to, if you have to come to the church to get it uh, on one of the days that, the, uh, secretary, that Sister Francis is here or Pastor Tyler, they'll be more than happy to, to give, you, give you a copy of it. Um, but uh, today is July what? <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to make sure everybody was up. It's the 25th of July, almost to August. Almost to August next month. We'll, we'll be, next week we'll be in August. And again, this, this, uh, this year is going quickly. Again, uh, going through the pandemic. Uh, it's really going fast. Uh, already August. Soon it'll be uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Y'all's favorite, everybody's favorite holidays, right? Right? Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, pray us in. Can one of you guys pray for me? Dear, everyone, by your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you for allowing, allowing us to see another day. Bless everyone by the sound of your voice. Help us as we come through these lessons that we learn to gain understanding of what you want us to do, how you want us to act, and how you want us to treat each other. Teach us in a way that we become together more as people, that we more become more loving, more forgiving, and more understanding, and help us to be great leaders, and, and, and as well, great fathers, that we can become more attuned to your way and not our way. Change our hearts and minds in all things we pray. Amen. 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 And today, uh, we're starting on the deliverance, conquest, wisdom, and courage, uh, which is, should be on your... First, second page? Yeah. Should be on the second page. So we're starting there. Um, the first question I have um, for everybody, um, what does deliverance mean to you? Uh, what, is, what does deliverance mean to you? Uh, can anybody chime in on what is, what, is, what is deliverance? What does it mean to you? Because the word deliverance uh, means, it's an actual word that means to be rescued and set free rescued and set free so what is what what are some things you can think of when it comes to being delivered anybody well, I, I believe it's different aspects of, I believe there's different aspects of being delivered but I can say one, one for me is like if, if I have a, a, a difficult trial and <coughs> What about uh, anybody else? What is deliverance? What is uh, deliverance? You know, when I joined the church, that, uh, you know, was being something to be praised and all that, that I was delivered from uh, most of my ways of sin <laughs> <laughs> and set on a different track to, you know, walk a more Christian friendly way. Mm -hmm. Right. So we were looking, you were looking to get released, you know, released from something, released from the stuff that you used to do in your past, released from the stuff that was going on and that, that we know that wasn't right. Or no, sorry, you didn't know. <laughs> you knew it was right and wrong, <laughs> but you wanted to be released from that, right? You wanted to be, you wanted to, to, to pretty much escape that other life. And it's, and it, it's difficult for us to escape something that we so used to doing. And not knowing and knowing that it's wrong, 
we still continue to do it because we know it's a norm to us. It's a norm to us. Um, you see, we get some relief out of it, right? Mm -hmm. You get some relief out of once you get delivered. <laughs> you some 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 forms of relief. You know, it's like that burden is off of you. It's a burden that's lifted off of you uh, of something that okay, I'm doing. I was doing wrong. Now I'm not. Uh, I don't have to face looking at looking behind my back and look to see who's coming. <laughs> I don't. I don't have to look around and 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 you know jump every time somebody say something to me. Somebody jump. You know, you, you know how you jump? <laughs> you know, you, like it scares you. Yeah. But it's just, you know, you, you just release from all that, uh, that grief and anger, per se. Um, what is going on right now that you that you need to be released from? It's, it's something, I mean, what's, it is, do you have some anger towards somebody that, that you need to release, you need to re get release from? I mean, we all, we all have, have things going on in our lives that's, that, uh, and, and it's just that one or two people that we don't, you know, that we are not uh, comfortable with or we're angry with. What about, what about that? What about some, to, what can you do to get released from that? Somebody that you're angry with. What are some things you can do to be released? I mean, can you call them up and apologize for something? Well, I think one thing we can do is uh, admit that we are angry with them in my case. We won't even admit it to ourselves. And then talk to them about it or whatever, if we can, in a, in a, in a, in a spiritual way. You know how we want a <laughs> worldly way, but if we can talk to them in a spiritual way, why are we, then we can probably solve a lot of problems. Right. They might be angry at us too. We don't think about what we've done as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one way of uh, approaching it, admitting it and, and getting it out of the open. I mean, you want you want to have peace within yourself, right? You want to have peace within yourself. You want to have peace within the situation. So yeah, talking it out, trying to see if you can, you know, squash all the stuff that was going on in the past, what's been going on for years. Uh, you know, squash that stuff. With, you know, become a family again. We talked about that last week about uh, how dysfunctional family. We, we all have had a part of a dysfunctional family, right? But again, forgiveness, um, being able to just, just, you know, just like you say, Tony, just admit it. Admit it that I'm angry with you. I mean, you, at some point you got to. Uh, you know, you want to be forgiven and be released from all that bondage. I think that uh, as when uh, uh, Abram his name was changed. God changed his name to Abraham. God had made some commitments to him mm -hmm. and he confronted God about it. Mm -hmm. How can I? I mean, I, I don't see nothing. I don't. Where is all that? Mm -hmm. And God told him, I'm your best friend. Mm -hmm. I am your best friend. Mm -hmm. And what it basically, what he was saying is that if you, if someone offend you as Deacon said, if you can talk to them about it, some people you can't talk to them, confront them about it. Right. Anything. But you can always talk to God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so you take it to him. And he will there I mean, if you really want to relieve yourself, take it to Jesus. And then he will tell you what route to take. To take. Because sometimes if a person offends you, and we've all been offended by different people, um, it seems to me like right now it's a way of life that people, they love to lie. People <laughs> love rather tell something that is, or make up something that is not true, better than telling the truth. Mm -hmm. From the church houses all the way down to the way house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that is what it is. Talk to the person if you can. Sometimes it's best not to talk to them <coughs> because they have people have animosity towards you. So it's hard to deliver yourself from the situation. So, how, but how can you do that with a family member, <laughs> your brother, <laughs> sister, a family member, if they don't want to talk to you? So, what are some ways that you can do? I mean, if God is trying to tell you. You should apologize. You should apologize to them, if possible, and then 
strike continued to pray about it. Mm -hmm. Continue to wait for yeah, this point where you have to keep it pursuing it because you don't have to work at a certain point. Yeah. But like I said, the only thing you can do is do your part and let God handle the rest of it. But it's hard for us. We hold on to the past. <laughs> for some reason, we hold on to the past. It, it's, it's harder on us. It's, it burdens us more when we hold on to the past. You know, the past, we got to let it go. We got to learn to let it go. Don't y'all think that? We have to learn to let it go. At some point, you got to learn to let it go. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we are all getting older. <laughs> of course, it makes sense and it's and easy to say it, but what do we usually do? Hold on to hold it. Hold on to it still. Right. We still hold on to it. Well, if you let it go, it will come back to haunt you. <laughs> so you have to confront it. Right. Either prop the tree up, right? Or if it's a bad tree, cut it down. Mm -hmm. Stay away from it. But at some point, you still have to confront that tree, right? <laughs> you have to. You have to. Uh, at some point, you have to. You can cut it down mm -hmm. and cut, cut the it, relationship cut off. Off. Mm -hmm. Just stay out of that area. Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> what are some ways that, that that you think God talks to you? It tells you when to cut it off. You know, what are some ways? What are some? What are some ways that you think God speaks to you today? Some ways that God speaks to me. Like I said, dreams. I believe mm -hmm. sometimes He tells me to give you dreams, but then you just sometimes feel it, mm -hmm. and that's that. You know, when you can tell when you can open up the Bible to a certain place. Mm -hmm. you know, something that you have in your heart. Right. I think God speaks to you that way too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are some ways that God speaks to you? Anybody? Uh me be anything, like the situations he puts us in a lot of times. Mm -hmm. He's leading us to a certain way, a certain way of thinking. It could be through friends, could be through enemies, you know, it could be it just this uh, no it's, it's uncountable how he can reach us, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on the situation and the particular thing he wants us to do. So do y'all think that he can he, he talks to us through the Bible? The Bible? Yeah. What about what about that small voice in you that that comes to you? <laughs> that small voice in you that comes to you when you're thinking about something, that small voice that comes to you, right? Yeah. What about what about advice from from other others? Deacon Tony, Tony talks to me. Or Brother James talks to me. It could be anyway. It could be yeah. in any way. I am one. Mm -hmm. So what about, and you said dreams, right? The thing is we need to be attuned to what, when, it, when he's talking to us. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. When we really listen, when he's speaking to us, or he's giving us these get clues and ideas on things, you know, mm -hmm. insight. Mm -hmm. you know, he can also talk to us through when um, we do it through circumstances, right? Circumstances that we're going through, he can talk to us in, the, in those ways. But we got to learn to do what? You Listen. Receptive. You have to be receptive. Got to be receptive, right? God right. gives you the tools to work out any problem you have. Mm -hmm. You have to be receptive. Yeah. yeah. In addition, some things that we make out to be problems aren't really problems. Right. 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 I agree. I agree. So. <clears throat> The Word of God. Let's turn to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. And this up here, guys. Yeah, yeah. Do I, make it, I need to make it bigger. Okay. It's just a yellow, too. So, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, you guys there? You got it? Almost. Almost. 316? Yeah, 316. Okay. And we're talking about how he talks to us through the word of God. And it says, all scriptures is God breathed. And it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 
So it said all scriptures is talking about the Bible. So we're talking about right now through the word of God. Through the word of God. You know, the whole Bible is, is inspired by the word. Because it's, it's, it is trustworthy, right? The Bible is trustworthy. It inspires us to live a certain kind of way. We should, we should also read it and let it apply to us. Let it apply into our daily lives. Now, how can we do that, though? How can we do that? By studying the Bible. By study. Yeah. Right. By study. Right? By study. Yeah. The Bible, you know, it's, it's, it's our standard. <laughs> you know, we say our, uh, in the military, SOPs. <laughs> it's our SOP, right? The Bible is our SOP. Mm -hmm. It's our standards of practice. <laughs> it's the standard. So even though it's still the the Old Testament and then the New Testament is still a standard of living. Now, do we continue to live off everything that's in the, in the Old Testament? No. <laughs> no. Um, you know, because there was a lot of stuff up there that, that was going on back then that was, whew, that was too much. Uh, so, no, we don't have to live in that standard. And that's why the New Testament was here to try to, to translate a little more, a little bit better uh, so we could, we could understand but the Bible is supposed to be our truth. It's supposed, it's supposed to be our truth. Uh, it's supposed to safeguard us against what? False teaching, right? So I can't get up here and say something that's, that's, uh, <laughs> how can I say this? That, that's faking it. <laughs> I can't say something that's, well, let me speak for God because God spoke for itself in the Bible, right? It's my job to be able to, to teach, I mean, to read that and teach it from the book. So we're learning that from the Bible. You know, it's a source, it's, it's a source for us to be able to, to, to learn from. And, it's, and it guides us, right? It guides us. Well, it's, you said that you can't get up there and teach something that is not true. <coughs> but then the Bible also say, be aware of Jesus said, be aware of false gods. Right, right. False messengers. Mm -hmm. but false speaking. Mm -hmm. And see, actually, if you look at the, the construction of the church, they all have a platform. That's so that the pastor or the teacher can look out over the flock. Mm -hmm. But see, when you are up, we are looking up at the speaker and everything that the speaker says no particular speaker is not true mm -hmm. and that's their impression right and that's what I said that's what I said earlier I said and if so I'm saying stuff you have to be this Bible is a guideline yeah that yeah. we should base the reality of existing the way that the Lord has set forth for mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. but we have a tendency of taking concepts out of the battle, mm -hmm. what pleases us. Mm -hmm. And then we speak on the thing that pleases yeah, and, ourselves. Right, and that's why if earlier, just like I said, we could take the word. <laughs> why take the word out of context when it's already there? It's in the Bible. So if I want to put it in my church, it's just like they made uh, how they made the other different types of Bible. Okay? They put it in their perspective. Let me make this easier for you to understand. So if you can't understand the King James Version, let me let you understand the NIV because it's clearer words. It's still taken out of context of what the words originally said, right? That's why it's so important for us to study and so show yourself approved so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so you will understand because like I say, I might just be going off most of your mind feeling or, or what, what how it affected me, but not necessarily what the Bible actually messages given. Right, right, right. And it has been done in the past, so we, that's why we need so important for all of us to study to see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. So let's turn to Psalms. Let's see what what it also says about the Word of God. Psalms one nineteen and eleven. Psalms one nineteen and eleven. And I'll let Tony uh, get that one. 
119 and 11, and then um, also uh, 105, you can get that marked in, mark as well, Psalms 119, 11, and then Psalms 119, 105. The Bible verse is in there. Psalm, Psalm 19, 11 said, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So he, all this, he, he talked to God, Peter, people, <coughs> not everybody, mm -hmm. not everybody's God's people, but he said he put it in their heart. Mm -hmm. That means he wants them to, and, and, and expects them to follow the law, mm -hmm. his rules, his regulations. Because mm -hmm. if you hide them, it means it's something, you don't hide nothing that's not valuable. Right. Anything worthwhile, you're going to try to hide it, conceal it, because you don't want anybody to have it. So mm -hmm. he said he's hiding this, like his special gift that he's given us, his words. His wisdom for mm -hmm. his people. So it it's just like uh, I can memorize Bible verses, but if I'm not living by those Bible verses, I'm really telling myself a lie, right? <laughs> I'm living a lie. You know, it it's inspiring to memorize the scriptures. But that alone don't keep us from sinning. <laughs> we can we can we can memorize the whole Bible, but again, it's not going to keep me from continuously sinning. But God is talking through us through the Bible. These are these are just some ways that that He shows you. Now, what does what does one hundred five say? What does one hundred five say, Brother Wesley? Verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp So, you know, just, just look at the verse again. The word is a lamp for my feet. So if you're traveling in the dark and you see, you don't see these trees that's in front of you. You know, you don't see those trees in front of you. You're traveling in the dark. The Lord said, I'm going to give you light. I'm going to light the path for you. So it's telling you right there through the word. These are why we, we, we should recognize and start living by the word. He says it. Your word is a lamp for my feet. A light on my path. Show me where to walk. <laughs> Guide me. Lead me. <laughs> Take me to there. Take me there. You know, we, we have to learn to listen to what the Word says. The book is there. It's there for us. No, you don't have to memorize everything. You don't have to memorize, memorize, and memorize. You just have to follow. And believe. And trust. You have to, you have to know, you know, just like as you said earlier, about false teaching, false preaching. And you can learn, look, and say, okay, wait, wait. I don't think the Bible's saying that to me. <laughs> I, I know you're saying this is what you're thinking that the Bible's saying to you, but I don't see it that way. I see that he's saying it in this way. 
you know, and then that's when, you know, we bump heads. <laughs> We've done this a lot. We take it, this is what I look, the way I learned it, and this is the way I learned it. No, let's just learn what it says in the Bible, and let's go from there. We don't even have to argue. And then there could be certain situations where he's actually talking to both of you, the mm -hmm. same thing, mm -hmm. about, but each of you, both of you are actually right, you know. Mm -hmm. For a particular time, like you say, how he talks to us in our own voice or speaks in a different way. Mm -hmm. You both probably could be right. Mm -hmm. If King James was really so to prove the word of the reason not be ashamed, right in the Bible, the word of truth. So you have right in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's the and and that's, the, that's the importance of a Sunday school, right? That's the importance of Bible study. Because we're studying, right? We're studying. We're keeping up with the word. We're keeping it refreshed in our souls, right? We, that's, a, that's the purpose of why we try to do, we study, we study the Bible, you know, so we can all see it clearly, uh, that, that we all are, you know, going to be on the same and right path. Uh, now, he can also talk to us through uh, the, the small voice, that, that small voice of, of the Holy Spirit that, that I was talking, that we talked about earlier. The, the small voice. Now let's let's look and see where that small voice is, might come from. Acts eleven and twelve. Acts eleven and twelve. Acts eleven and twelve. Now listen. Look look at look how this how the voice of the Holy Spirit talks to us. And this is like we said earlier, Tony. Like you said earlier, we have to learn to listen to that that, that inner voice. Acts eleven and twelve. It says, the Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. <laughs> what told him? The Spirit. The Spirit told him to have no hesitation. And then, again, in Acts, Acts 13 and 2. Acts 13 and 2. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, listen, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, it's those, again, those are the little small voices it's the, it's the, the Lord is telling you, it's time to change. It's time to turn it off. But these, again, these are some ways how the Lord is talking to us through the Bible and now through, through the Spirit. We've all, we've all had that, that little voice tell us, don't do that, right? <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop. The Holy Spirit said, stop. Stop what you're doing. You know, and Paul had a vision. He had a vision in Macedonia. Do y'all know what happened? What, Tony, do you know anything about this, this one where Paul had that vision in Macedonia? He, he and his companions traveled through the region. Well, uh, at the time, I'll, I'll, if I remember, it's just they were building up the churches. They were building up the churches. churches. They were setting them up. Going through the region. Yeah. And he's picking his group and other disciples were separating, picking their crew. Mm -hmm. So it was just God leading them in a way that was best for mm -hmm. that particular group of disciples. Right, right, right. And he was, he, he's, you know, it was everybody, everybody was assembling <laughs> to move. But God knew all of them could work together the same way. So he knew some of them worked better with each other than others. Mm -hmm. So he had, had them separate. That's why he spoke to them in that, in that form of matter. Mm -hmm. So he would get the best out of all of them and what's best for the setting up the whole group of churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, that was that was the spirit talking to him, right? The spirit was talking to Paul. He was telling him. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, you know, you don't know, you don't, you know, it's 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 something. To know that you are a child of God when you when you hear those little things tell you to stop 
Don't go, don't, don't do it that way. You know, some people call it they what they call premonitions. <laughs> but this is what the premonition. This I had a premonition, and this this no, that was God talking to you. <laughs> that was the spirit talking to you. Something told me not to do it. We have all said it. Something told me not to do it, right? Something told me, something told me not to go there. And next thing you know, somebody fighting and shooting and stuff. And something told me, no, it ain't something told you. <laughs> it's the spirit of God telling you, talking to you. It's the spirit telling you, talking to you. How many situations have you been in with something you, you said, it? I knew I shouldn't have did that. I knew I shouldn't have did it. We, 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 you know, we all get in those situations and we, and, and we try our best to, to, to not even um, <laughs> look, look um, I'm not going to say, look like fools <laughs> in the process. Now, some other ways that, they can talk, that, that God talks to us and, and we get given advice is others. Other disciples talking to other disciples. Right? Brother Wesley, we, we, we go on to Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. Way of fool seems right to them, but the wise and wisdom advice. Fool show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook their insults. Somebody annoys you, right? <laughs> somebody's, a, somebody's being annoying. And, and again, that's Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. That's where he was reading from. And what happens when somebody annoys you? <laughs> you know, somebody's being annoying. You try to get away from them, right? Mm -hmm. As quick as possible. But what if, what if that annoying person is the one that's telling you the right thing to do? <laughs> Have I we feel, ever thought about that? I feel that very seldom. What does that run into? <laughs> it might be. Somebody that's annoying, you might be the one that's telling you the right thing to do sometimes. You know, only fools continue to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. But we, we, we've all done some foolish things. But do we take it to God or do we take it to men? Do we take it to God? To, that, what is that? Do, do, we take, do we take advice from a man, I mean man or woman, I'm just talking about another person. Would you rather take it from another person than hear it from God? We want to hear from God, but the first person we reach for is who? People. <laughs> I need some advice. I need some, why is this happening to me? Why do you think this is happening to me? Why, why do you think this, why do you think this is happening to me? <clears throat> you know, we're seeking out counsel. We're seeking out, seeking out. Answers. But the ironic thing about that they counsel we seek out and know less about the situation than we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do know less. But you know, you have those that say, I know what you're talking about, I know what you're going through. You know, I know. I know the same thing you know. What about what about as they say the audible voice of God? The audible voice of God. That's in Acts 9, 4 and 5. Acts Nine, four, and five. We're talking about the audible voice of God, Brother Tony. Um, the audible voice of God. What is that? Let me read. Let me read Acts nine, not ninth chapter, verse four and five. Mm -hmm. And it said, He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then verse five, Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, And I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Replied. <laughs> This is, remember, so this is before Paul was converted, that he was a, a tax collector, and he, when 
really hard on his own people, the Jewish people, that he would always select more than what he required, that he would always persecute them and, and bully them more than he would do everyone else. Mm -hmm. So on his road, he, that's where he first started getting converted, that, that God stops him and blinds him and knocks him off his, right. his jackass or a donkey, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it is where he's, the changeover starts taking place. Right. And, and Paul, but Paul didn't see the vision, right? He didn't see it. He, he didn't see it coming. It's like we don't see when it's coming. We don't see. We don't see it coming. But something's gonna change your life, right? We don't see. We don't know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> we don't know when it's gonna happen, but it happens. You know, where was you at when you when your when you, you when your life changed and you gave gave it gave it to Christ? Where were you at? Was you at church or was you somewhere else, somewhere that you were supposed to be? Or were you home? <laughs> I gave my life to Christ at church. You know, I I knew that I was. I pondered it for weeks and weeks and weeks, <clears throat> but then I finally said, "Okay, I'm giving it all. I'm giving it all." And it's the same thing with Paul did. He acknowledged it, and he confessed his own sins, and he, and, and he surrendered. But this is, again, this is what we're supposed to be doing when we are converting our life to Christ, surrendering. I surrender all, <laughs> right? I surrender all. I give it all to you, Lord. Not halfway, because that's what we do. We try to do. We say we're going to give it all, but then we end up doing it halfway. So we want to live between Christ and then we try to live in the worldly, worldly way, right? That we like. Yeah. That we yeah. like. We used to. But we got to cut it off. Cut it all off. You know, we got to cut it all off. Cut it loose. Can't do it halfway. You got to go all the way. You got to surrender all of it. But we got to learn to do. We got to learn to, 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 to just get give it all to Christ. Give it all to him. I think in verse 5 there it says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goals. What are the goals? Pricks. It's, it's, it's like pricks. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, it was like it was hurting. Beat this up against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He was hurting himself. Yeah, he's fighting on <laughs> wasted time. Mm -hmm. He's only hurting himself. So. You're only hurting yourself. And he was still rebelling, but you only hurting yourself. The, the more you the more you try to not take this in, you only hurting yourself. And that's what God, that's what God was trying to tell him. You might as well go on and convert. <laughs> you might as well you might as well go on and get it and turn it all over to me. Because uh, you're not going to get nowhere without me. That's what he was telling you. That's what he was telling you. And also now, let's turn, this is going to probably be the last one, last verse for, the, for today. Uh, Matthew 1, Matthew chapter 1, 20 and 21. Matthew chapter 1. 20 and 21. Are you there? You got it? Okay, one second. Matthew 1, 20 and 21. It says, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And in a dream, this is why I said in a dream, like you said, in a dream, in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And verse 21 said, and she, she will give birth to a son and you are to give his name well, Jesus. 
Because he will save people from their what? Sins. A dream. You know, we have dreams, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord talks to us and speaks to us through dreams. Who's to say that your dream ain't right? <laughs> Who can say your dream is not a dream? You know, the, uh, scientists and, and uh, all the prolific people say that dreams are just your reality. You're still up. Just your brain is just functioning at night. And, and it's just thinking about something that you was thinking about the day before or whatsoever. Those are dreams from God. <laughs> they can say what they want to say. I believe otherwise. <laughs> dreams do come true. <laughs> Dreams are true. And it's just as he says, he told him, <laughs> he told Joseph, so don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Did he listen? Did he listen? Yes. Um, he eventually came through. If eventually, but it ended up doing what? Doing it just as God said. That you're going to bear a son and a son is going to, and I want you to name him what? Jesus. You know, so <clears throat> we're going to continue to talk about how God communicates to us. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about how he talks to us through vision, through angels, through circumstances, and by the inner conviction and peace. When we get convicted. <laughs> That's when we want to listen, right? Mm -hmm. When we get convicted. Oh, now I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you, God. I should have listened. Yeah, after he convicted you. So we're going to move forward with getting more ways on how God speaks to us. And then after that, uh, we're going to talk about how why being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is vital to your everyday life. What kind of relationship are you going to continue to hold with God in your everyday life? How are we supposed to act? How are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? So we're going to talk about that next week. We're also going to talk about um, why is listening to God essential in, in your in your uh, everyday walk with him. Why is listening to God essential in our daily walk with him? In our daily walk. Uh, why is it essential? Why is it essential to you, uh, Brother Wesley? Can you tell me, why, why is listening to God essential in your everyday life? So, you know, what we went over today is what are some ways God is speaking to you on a daily basis. And, and we talked about through the word of God, that's through the Bible, uh, through the inner steel, uh, that small little uh, Holy, Holy Spirit voices in, that, that comes to you, tells you to stop doing it, don't do it. Uh, through the advice of counsel of men and women of God, through the audible voice of God, and through dreams. So we've discussed those, and that's what, what our topic was today. Was again, what are some ways God is speaking to you?
So let's trust. Continue to trust in the Lord. Let's continue to be blessed, be thankful for what God has given us, what God has done for us, and for us even, uh, be, again, being here one more day. Because <laughs> he didn't have to grace and give us mercy to be here. He didn't have to give us air today to breathe. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. So everybody, let's, let's uh, close out. So what you got, Mike? Yeah. You want to close us out? We're going to go ahead and um, end today, but let's, let's end with some some words, some music.